What's up, installers? It's your boy JP, the install guy here, hoping to make your install life a whole lot easier. And today we're going to talk about relays and how you can use one of these to install a whole lot more accessories inside your car audio applications. So if this is your first time here, you should probably consider subscribing or following because if you're into any type of car audio installation, product reviews, or how-to tutorials, then this channel might be the one for you. So a lot of people are intimidated by relays because they just don't understand them. But once you realize this is just a big switch and you understand what these terminals are and how you can hook them up to get what you want, it'll make it a whole a lot easier. So this is the inside of an SPDT relay. SPDT stands for single pole double throw. The single pole means that we have one pole that can control one circuit at a time. The double throw means that it can go between two different options, which is going to be these two terminals right here. On the bottom of this relay, you're going to have some numbers. We're going to have 85, 86, 87, 87A, and 30. 5 and 86 are going to be our coil terminals. This right here is the coil. When we put power and ground on 85 and 86, this is going to create a magnetic force, which is going to make this pole move from here to here, which is why as soon as you hear this trigger, you're going to hear a small little click. So notice none of these coils say positive and negative. That's because it doesn't matter which one you put 12 volts on or which one you put the ground on, you will be able to ignite that coil regardless. But with every diagram that I've seen using a relay, 85 is usually always negative. So I always use 85 for my ground and 86 for my positive. So with that being said, if you want to use a positive trigger to turn this relay on, you will ground 85 and you put that positive 12 volts on number 86. If you have a negative trigger that you want to use to turn on this relay, you will put 86 to 12 volts and put that negative trigger to 85. Lastly, we have our terminals right down the middle, 87, 87A, and 30. 87 is going to be our normally open, 87A is going to be our normally closed, and 30 is going to be our output. If you look at it from here, this terminal is coming up to this pole, which is the one that's in the middle. This terminal right here is on this side. And as you can see, it does not have that pole touching it all the time, which is why this is normally open, which means that the 87A is this terminal and the pole is touching that terminal all the time unless this relay is ignited, which means that this is going to be normally closed. But 87A is always touching 30 unless you turn this relay on and then this is going to flip to that. Whatever polarity that's on 87 is going to actually output on terminal 30. So when this relay turns on, if we have 87 grounded, this is going to output a negative. If we have constant 12 volts going to 87, then this is going to output a positive. One of the main reasons we would use a relay is to amplify. So let's say you're installing your brand new system and you have four amps that you're trying to hook up. The remote turn on from your aftermarket radio does not have enough amperage to turn on all of those amps. But this would be a good case where you actually use a relay. This only needs 150 milliamps to turn on, but it can output up to 30 amps on terminal 30. Since there's a thousand milliamps and one amp, that remote turn on from your aftermarket radio can possibly turn on seven relays. And since these two terminals are always touching, we're not going to do anything with 87A. Since we want positive coming out of terminal 30, we're going to make sure a 12 volt constant is going to terminal 87. And we're going to ground terminal 85 and that remote turn on coming on from our aftermarket radio is going to be the 12 volts going into 86, which turns on our relay. So in which we've taken that low current accessory and output it a high current accessory. And you can use that for more than just turning on those four amps. If you have some underglow lights or some rock lights or any type of other accessories that need to be turned on, you can use that 30 output. And you can also use that to turn on another relay to get an extra 30 amps of output just so you're not trying to put too much amperage on one circuit like tapping into the fuse box. So this is how we have our relay wired up so we can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Terminal 85 is going to ground, so we have a black wire here. This is going to be our remote turn on, so it's going to turn this relay on. We have 12 volt constant coming up here, being powered by a drill battery, and this is going to actually be our output wire to turn on the stack of single den radios that we have. So as soon as you hear this relay click, it's going to turn on all three of these old school radios.
And there's other ways that you can use these relays, but I just want to show you a real quick way on how you can amplify a low current ignition to power up a whole bunch of accessories the safe way. And that's about it for this one. If you guys found any type of value in this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment if you want to. At this time, I'd like to thank anybody that chooses to support the channel, whether you guys hit those links in the description to buy all your parts from my website, you guys get one of the fan subscriptions from the website or the Patreon. Or if you hit that super thanks on this video, all that goes a long way with me and I greatly appreciate it. So till next time, this is your boy JP signing out, telling y'all to keep going, keep growing, and have a blessed day. Peace.